Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 10, Episode 5. This is a really good episode. Let's get started. Now, I want to say I am not finding this on Prime Video. You have to go to YouTube and then search for Season 10, and you get a few episodes. And it's not photographed as well, but it's the best we can do. And so here we go. So I've learned how to recap these episodes now because the screen captures are hard. Here's our first artist. Remember, you have to submit a self-portrait in order to be invited onto the program. So here's a self-portrait with the artist. And then I, what I did on this recap, finally figured it out, is made a separate photo capture of that artist's submission so we could see it a little bit more close up. Here's the next one. Yeah, see, the, the capture that you get on YouTube is just not, not great. And so I wanted to do the artist justice. And I'm sorry I didn't do that on the first couple of episodes, but, but you learn what you learn when you learn it. <laughs> At least that's my experience. And I think this might be the last episode that I'm going to be able to find on YouTube at all. They're currently filming season 11. This is season 10. Although looking in chronological order is almost impossible. Depending on where you go, this is called season 14. So <laughs> it is an absolute mystery to me how... Uh, anyway, we'll just leave it that way. They don't make it easy for you to follow these, these episodes in any kind of chronological order. But as you can see, I think this is our third artist in. We have some really exciting competitors here, and that's what you want to see. You want to see a varied field. You want to be excited about the different artists, and, and I definitely am. Yeah, so here's what the screen capture would give me, but then I went closer up and got a much better view. I recognize this painting from, if you go to Portrait Artist of the Year on YouTube, you can find their fan page, and you will see so many wonderful painters who contribute and painters who also share their submissions that might not have got on the program, which is inexplicable because they're all very fabulous. And many people have applied time and time again. And I, I believe that was one of the contributors. Yeah, this is the one that I was really interested in because it's so tiny and looks to me like it might be gold leaf around his head. <laughs> I, this is... Oh, this just takes my breath away, this painting. So now let's look at it close up. I mean, wow. Isn't that timeless? Couldn't that be from the Renaissance? But at the same time, it's completely contemporary. Oh, God. Wow. Uh, I, I hope, I hope when he's home working that he's using a magnifying glass of some kind because this would be so hard. Now, of course, I identify with an older painter because it's your time to shine. And... Look at how great that self-portrait is. And then, gosh, I'm such a good painter. I'll just throw a couple of old masters behind me <laughs> over my shoulder, right? Like, how does this guy not win the whole program? Uh, you know, already we've seen artists that should win the whole program. But it, it brings this artist to light so we can follow their progress and, and, and become fans. And, and that's, that's really the point of the program. Everybody wins. And I, I know the people end up being friendly with each other, which is just lovely. So much art history is is reflected in this particular self-portrait. It it would be it would be impossible for your brain not to to register that here. You know the contemplation of the skull. Oh yes, yes, a device used many many times, but timeless. I'm not. This is there is no criticism here. Just total approval and acceptance. Just fantastic, fantastic painting. Oh, we're so lucky to have this program. I just wish that there was a still life painter of the year. And uh, I don't know. Oh, anyway, I got distracted. Here we go again. Um, we have seen a circle used before. I think it's a clever device. They're not using it as a concave mirror in this case, I don't think. It's just, well, well yeah, yeah. It does have a bit of that concave perspective in it which is kind of fascinating. Not that we haven't seen it before, but it's, it's clever. And, and also, um, as you can imagine, uh, quite, quite difficult to pull off. So we have had 
so far such fantastic painters that how can this, you know, usually I get upset with the judges when we get to the end, but, you know, I'm, the reason I'm going to be upset when we get to the end because is simply because it's a competition, and I, frankly, I don't want it to be a competition. I want everybody to win, but that's, that's me not accepting the reality of the world because it is a competition. So I have to stay... Uh, to stay accepting about what is. Wow, look at that. Oh, boy, painting painting is just such a, a wonderful endeavor, no matter where you are in it, whether you're beginning, whether you've been at it for a long period of time. It is, it is just, will teach you everything you need to know about the world. All right, Sue Barker is our first model up. She's a professional tennis player. Here she is. And I, I believe she's a commentator, too. Must have been maybe a commentator for the BBC. I don't know the different networks there. They put her in front of, admittedly, kind of a, a green tennis court green, uh, which, is, which is good. Uh, turn the easels around. They're four hours in. It's actually been two hours, plus a lunch break, and then two more hours. So very limited amount of time. And they turn their easels around, and Sue's going to get her first chance to look at them. She's going to pick one to go home, which is an honor for her. Here's the first one up. Now, they did, they did hardly spent even a moment of camera time on this particular image. Usually you get an image of the whole painting, then they'll zoom in and show you a detail, and then um, maybe even two details. But... And then a perspective from far away, so you can get a sense of the scale. But boy, they did not do this that in this episode. So I got this screen capture so we could see at least the size of it. Now, he's the fellow I was referencing before with his self-portrait, where he did the um, absolutely fantastic portrait of himself and threw the old masters behind him. And I, I, he just had an emotional response. I felt like when during the program, but that that could be me projecting. Uh, I'm a, an emotional person. Here's the next one. Uh, I really like this one. Oh, and by the way, the thing, uh, the prop on the, the side is something she received when she retired from broadcasting. I I think it's an old camera. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember if it's an authentic camera or whether it was a prop camera, but she brought it with her. And oftentimes a sitter will bring something that's really important to them. And if you're in the business of painting, you know that. People want to have personal items with them because it's, it's, it's going to be in their home and it's going to be timeless and hopefully handed down over generations. So when we pull away, we can see the size of it. Here's the third one. Uh, this one doesn't look as accomplished as the first two. It just happens to be flatter. Uh, they did incorporate the element of the camera, which was a tricky thing to have to incorporate when you have an object next to your primary focus of interest and you got to somehow put it together. It, it, takes, it takes some design ability to do that. And I think each one of the artists were able to do that. There we can see the size of it. That's quite ambitious for four hours. That's quite a bit of territory to cover. And as we know, the more paint you mix, it means the longer time it's going to take for you to mix the paint and apply the paint. So, you know, working big has certain advantages and working small has different advantages. Um, I know people will practice for weeks and weeks before doing this. They only, I think, have a month before, before the um, actual competition. They have very limited time before the competition to prepare. All right, Sue Park Barker is going to pick one. Oh, he picks this one. She picks this one. I'm so happy for him. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes someone just captures my heart, and, and he does. It's his, his time to shine, and I want him to shine. Now I did another. Because they hardly showed his work at all in the program, I wanted to get another screen capture so we could just appreciate what he did in four hours, and oh my gosh, what would he have done in more time? We would have been even more blown away. All right, Alan Titchmarch is our next model up. I adore Alan Titchmarch. He used to be on a show called Ground, Ground Work. I don't have it right. Ground Force, I think it was called. And it, he's um, a landscape designer. And what he would do was he would come to people's homes who had just really terrible yards and, and, and whatnot. And he would bring in a crew, he'd bring in a construction person and, and someone who would work on the plants with him and would create these amazing gardens that were just beautiful. 
just and, and it was done with lightheartedness it was done with giving it was generous it was oh it was just such you know it was a reality program but it was so sweet and lovely so of course it's not around anymore because reality turned into something else now we'll look at the four paint uh three paintings that alan will pick from here's the first one of course I love this one. If you've watched my channel, you know I love this because I love paintings that are super, super soft, that just blend and mold. And, and the other thing I really love is look at the work of the triads going on in the background. That is not a solid green. He's got cerulean blue on the left, or she, and then, you know, browns, everything. Oh, so much power in the, in the color mixing there. And color mixing is great, but you also have to put them in the right places. You gotta put those masses in the right places so you get some value patterns that read as a form. Yeah, see, this to me looks like it's coming out of the canvas instead of being uh, painted somewhere else and then being uh, pasted on top. I love paintings that look like they're emerging. Now, I equally love this one, and I don't know why. You know, there's an excitement of color in it. Um, there's this person was very ambitious. They put everything in, you know, the chair, the hands, most of the legs. This is an ambitious piece for the amount of time that they had. Um, and of course, would have resolved everything if they had more time. I find this an exciting piece. I, what would you do if you had to choose one of these? It, it just becomes, I call it a Sophie's Choice. And that's, um, you know, maybe a little a, too, maybe it's a little too soon for that type of joke. I hope not. It's just a really hard choice. There we can see it a little more from far away. So she's she doesn't use as many muted tones. She's she's pretty pretty direct getting in there, which shows a lot of confidence and there's a lot of color harmony. Here's the third one. This is even more diffused in terms of uh, you know what I what I consider. You almost don't see any lines in this painting at all, right? no lines. You know, oftentimes a painter will outline the nose or the eyes or something like that, but there, it's not. It's just creating forms. You're, you can't even see a separation where one form begins and the other one ends. Oh, he's the fellow who had the painting with the skull at the beginning. Oh, boy. I don't know what Alan's going to do. I, I would have had to say, I cannot choose. I will buy all of them. <laughs> But maybe that's not allowed in the rules. It's probably not. Once you're in a competition, of course, there are rules to follow, as there should be. Of course, there should be. All right, here's the one Alan picks, which is the very first one. And oh, I, anyone he would have picked would have been fabulous. So I'm really happy for him. Now, our last model is Philippa Perry. She is a, oh, here we go, Philippa Perry. She is a psychotherapist and author. So um, now we're getting into some celebrities that I, I don't know of. Uh, but there, there's a reference photo so we can see what she looks like. Um, very simple background behind her. So let's end. Hmm, boy, that black would be, that mass of black that she's wearing becomes, uh, I, would have to, I would have to think about that for a while. It's going to be. That's going to be a, a, a large form if you include it. I, I'm very curious to see how do the artists uh, go about what they're going to what they're going to solve. In the end, painting is just solving lots and lots of problems. Here's the first one up. Um, okay, uh, it's a beautiful job. I don't understand the candle next to it. It must have been what was next to her. It must have been a prop that she brought for, for some reason which is is fine and and it all works it all works very well but you see what i mean about the black see you have to, you have to break up that black all right here's the second one up again really beautiful job um and it, again you know one thing that when you watch the program for a while you get a sense of who might have more camera time now this is the fellow that did that tiny 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 painting at the beginning and now we see him again here. I realized that uh, I got my slides a little mixed up. All right, here's this. So that was the first one. Here's the second one. Boy, that's that's really beautiful. But I also think what I've done here is cropped it. Oftentimes, does it, I don't know if this happens in your painting as well, but sometimes I'll think that my painting is like okay, but if I crop it, it becomes way more dynamic. It's... it's um, you know, which has to do with design, simply. 
So we're going to pull, I think we get a chance to pull away and see. Oh no, we're going in. All right. See, that's what I mean about the camera. If the camera spends some time on you, it probably is a little bit of a giveaway that, that you're going to be favored to some degree. And uh, I think, uh, yeah. So anyway, here's one from further away. Now his self-portrait at the beginning also had that yellow tone all around him and then his face. Oh boy, I, I love this. I tend to like unfinished things. I like to, I like informal things. Um, everybody here was, was a really strong painter. So it's the same problem that Alan Titchmarch has. What are you going to do? Oh. All right, Philippa Perry picks one to go home, which is an absolute honor to be chosen. And, and uh, let's see which one she picks. Oh, she picks this one. I'm surprised. But um, that's... That's lovely. Yeah, again, any one. She could have picked absolutely any one, and and, and uh, I would have agreed. Now we get we start to get into the final judging. Now the final judging begins, and the um, if you watch the program in full rather than a recap like this, it you know they talk about all the paintings. You get to hear the judges' different preferences. I prefer to skip over that. Maybe you do too. Maybe that's why you're watching this recap. And so. Uh, what the judges are going to do here is they pick three people to go on to the semifinals of this episode, but only one will go forward to being on the um, semifinals of this season. So the first one they pick is this one. And that surprised me because the camera fooled me. They spent no time with this person at all. So I was very surprised that this one got picked. But, uh, but I'm also very happy that it got picked. They can handle the final commission. Let's see what the next one is. All right, here's the next one. Yep, totally agree. But, you know, it you could have rolled the dice and, and absolutely, I think any of the people today probably could do the final commission. All right, and this last one of Alan, and that's the one that he chose. Yeah, something about that is just so warm and inviting because it shows some of his inner personality as well. If you can if you can capture that inner personality in a self-portrait, you, you know you've nailed it. All right, the final judging begins. Now in the final judging we get to see their submission piece, which they had lots of time to work on, next to what they were able to do in the time limits today. First I got a screen capture from far away so we can see all of them. And Boy, they all would work great for the final commission. Now, we don't know what the parameters of the final commission are. It might have to be a certain size to read in a distance in a gallery. And so the person who paints very small, the person in the middle, is going to be at a disadvantage for that. Generally, when you're doing, uh, and we've seen from past programs, the commission needs to be a certain size, and that size tends to be big. Um, in our houses, these things would look enormous, but we don't we don't have huge gallery walls. So there's a self-portrait next to what she did today. Oh, I'm just blown away, really blown away by how many great, great painters we have among us. It is, we're just so lucky in this time. You know, if you go back into history, you know, you had to have, I mean, you still, obviously, you have to have a certain amount of wealth to to do this. You have to buy supplies and, and have food and shelter and whatnot. But but you aren't having to mix your paints and, and grind them up and all right. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole different subject. Okay. Absolutely love this painter. Uh, I uh this is I don't know what I would do. I but I often will watch this part of the program and think, okay, you don't know what to do, you love them all. But what would you do if you had to put your hard-earned dollars down in order to buy one? Because then it becomes more different than just subjective. It kind of goes into your heart place. Which one touches your heart? Now, I know which one touches my heart. And that's an inexplicable thing. It either does or it doesn't. It's something that you want to see every day and you know it's going to make you feel good. Or or it doesn't. And, and that's, you know, that's where uh, a collector's... Um, insight is, is very interesting, but also extremely personal. All right, here are the three artists waiting to hear what the judges have to say, and only one will go on. But boy, are they all deserving. They sure are. Hooray for them. All right, let's see who the winner is. Do you have a guess? 
I don't think you're going to be right, whatever your guess is. I was surprised, but let's take a look. All right, everyone is. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, this one. Wow, I was really surprised. And he's the one that had done that tiny self-portrait of himself. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.